Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to draw Pluto. So we're gonna start, of course, with our circle. We wanna warm up that shoulder. So you can, you can get that shoulder rotation. This is the only way you can make a perfect circle is to get that shoulder rotation. Kind of keep everything stationary other than that and just get that in rotation. Do a little practice like that. Now, you wanna keep your lines really, really light to start out. We're gonna get those basic lines down. So we're gonna start with a circle about the size of a baseball or an orange, and we're gonna place it right in the middle of our page. Just go around multiple times. And key to a good circle is repetition. Going around to be able to fix your flat spots, your indents, anything that makes it not a circle. It's not easy to make a perfect circle straight off the bat. The key is, it is to just learn how to fix it until it becomes a perfect circle. Then we need guidelines. Guidelines, of course, are there to tell us where we put the pieces of the character, like eyes, nose, mouth, etc., etc., etc. We need to know where the center of his head is. That is going to be looking off to the left, so we're going to do a curved guideline making a crescent moon shape on the inside of your circle. And a little horizontal guideline curving across the bottom of your circle as if it were a ball. Now we want to do a little bit of measuring. We'll use our thumb and our index finger, and we can measure from just the left to the right side of the circle, get the width like that. And we'll just slide over so that our index finger touches the side of the circle where our thumb lands. We can just make a little mark. That will help us out with how far out his snout's going to go. And we can draw a little line there if that helps as well. Then what we'll do is from where this horizontal guideline touches the circle, I'm just going to draw a really light line running out into that line out there. And we're going to draw essentially a half circle by curving down and back up, running into the inside of the circle about a quarter of the way down this way. So, runs right back into that guideline again. This just gives us the area of where snout is going to be. All right, now to draw the wrinkles in the top of the snout, uh, we're going to start just to the right of the center guideline right here. On this guideline, I'm going to draw a little curve. It's going to run just outside of the circle on that straight guideline. And we'll draw a second one running from the bottom of the circle. It's going to stay once again on that same guideline. Then a third. Everything stays straight. And then we'll do a fourth. And the thing with the fourth is that we're actually going to continue this up. I'm going to curve above the guideline and then run down into the guidelines over here that you drew, that straight line and that half circle. That's the top of the snout. And we're going to go ahead and draw his nose. His nose is an oval. If you're not sure how to draw an oval, just draw a circle incorrectly. That's going to be half in and half out of that snout. Right up here. Just kind of sideways. All right, now we can go back to that first wrinkle in the snout and or muzzle. The whole area can also be called the muzzle. And we're going to draw a little curve going above the line and running down into the guideline just on the other side of this line right there. That's actually his cheek. Then just on the guideline, following the same curve as the cheek above it, we got a little dimple, a little corner of the mouth right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the middle of the nose, just straight down, just a little bit below it. Can be lined up across from, from this line right here. And I'm going to curve down a little bit and then I'm just going to go straight across, going to flatten out and up into the middle of that dimple and that gives us the top of the mouth. And then we can just run over here and drag this line into that line and that gives us the entire top of his muzzle. All right. We're going to see his bottom lip, he has a little bit of an underbite, so I'm going to push his bottom lip out in front. And we're going to curve back, just a little smooth curve, yeah, almost uh, like a very shallow question mark. And then from there we can just follow this line, just connecting to the bottom lip right there. Just follow that half circle we drew. And once I get about here, I'm going to curve in just a little bit curve back, running into the bottom of the circle. It gives a little bit more curvature and it gives us a chin.
All right, now we can take the time to do some darkening. And so we're actually gonna just go over and we'll darken the outline of the nose first. Now uh, he's a puppy, he's got a wet puppy nose, so the light's reflecting off of that nose, so we can show that with a little glimmer of light in the top, a little oval in the top of the nose. And then we'll go ahead and turn our pencil to the side, use like a paintbrush and shade through that nose. The faster you shave the side of your pencil, the more even your surface is. You don't really ever want to use a tip when you're shading. The only thing that'll do is frustrate you, take you forever, look really bad when you're done, break your pencil and give you carpal tunnel. So to avoid all that stuff, use the side of the pencil. The faster you shade, the better it looks. Also, it doesn't require, or require too much skill. You can just grab a pencil and kind of flail your arm back and forth. And as long as you're touching the paper, you'll make an even surface. It's that easy. People tend to overthink shading. They'll go in with the tip of the pencil, spend 10 minutes just filling in the nose to lift on through their paper. The key is you just don't want to think about it. You just want to fly through it, and it's going to look fantastic. Then we're going to go ahead and just darken the lines that we did for the muzzle. Just get all those nice and solid. So. Pluto actually made his first appearance in September of 1930 in a cartoon called The Chain Gang. It was a Mickey Mouse cartoon, and Pluto actually played um, two different bloodhounds who were sent after Mickey, who had just escaped from jail. Mickey was a bad boy. And um, his second appearance, he actually showed up as Minnie's dog, and he had the name of Rover. And then by the cartoon The Moose Hunt, uh, they actually decided to change his name to Pluto, because the big news at the time in the newspapers was, hey, scientists discovered the existence of a new planet. Of course, it's been downgraded since then. So he got his name changed to Pluto. Also in the cartoon The Moose Hunt, Pluto actually talks. Uh, he says, kiss me, which was widely, widely regarded as a huge mistake, and they never went back to it. Instead, they got to create their talking dog later, a couple years later with Goofy. All right, let's give him some whiskers, some little dots in there, short little hairs on the ends, make sure. But they're short, he's a dog, not a cat. Pluto is actually a bloodhound. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to get the eyes in place. So we're gonna use the center guideline right here and I'm gonna draw a curve going up to the top of the circle. And then I'm gonna shoot down into the cheek. That gives us one eye. Now because his head is turned away from us, that means that everything on the left side of the guideline is farther away. So we're going to go about a quarter of the way down the eye, and draw a little curve just running right outside the circle, and it gives us a little bit smaller eye. That's, that's perspective. Things in the foreground are larger than things in the background, which appear smaller. Then we get the eyebrows. Eyebrows follow the same curve as the top of the eye, so we just hook above the eye there, and hook above this eye. And we can pencil in the pupils, the little egg shapes. And you wanna do this really, really light, so we're gonna be going in behind the cheek with this one. You still wanna draw the whole shape though. Sometimes if you get lazy and just kind of um, try to make shift a half circle or something, it's gonna look weird, like his eye is a square. So you just kinda of wanna draw the whole thing in there. And over here we draw a little hook shape. You wanna make sure you get that curve away from the side of the eye as well. Hop in and get that stuff darkened in. Pupils, you can add a little glimmer of light to the inside, just add a little bit of life to them, just a little ball of light. And then go ahead and shade in those pupils around the glimmer of light. 
All right, we get his ears next. His ears are long, stretched out letter U shapes. You know, like if you took a letter U and stretched it out like taffy. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start just on the uh, inside of the circle right here. We can draw a little curve going down, kind of, a, kind of an S curve, very shallow S curve. You don't wanna make the ear too long because you don't want them tripping over it. And we add thickness to the end and then get thinner as we attach. So. muscle holding that ear in place, just a little U-shape going behind it. And then you can just, once you're happy with it, darken it. His other ear will raise above his head. And so we're going to start from behind the eye right here because that's where the where the ear is actually attached. So it's going to raise up right above the eyebrow right here. And I'm just going to draw a curve going up. It should be lined up above the nose. Then we can drop that down in kind of a U shape, almost like he's waving at us with his ear. U shape. And then we'll curve back. Getting thinner as we attach. And now we can actually add thickness to this ear, almost making it look like a tongue just by tracing over the top curve of the ear, coming down to the inside, going down a little bit farther, coming down running back into that shape that you drew. That gives us a lot of thickness, almost like you can squish it. Once you've got that, you can go ahead and shade in those ears as well. Remember you're doing using the side of your pencil shade really, really fast. precise or accurate with it. It's a, it's a quick sketch. On the back of his head, he's got a bump. It's a brain bump. All bloodhounds have it. All real bloodhounds, all fake bloodhounds. Both he and Goofy have it. Goofy's just covered with his hat. And uh, so we're just going to start from the back and draw a little shallow bump on the back of his head. You kind of want to keep it close to the, to the back of the circle. Don't make it too big. And you can trace back over that. We want to make it look like that bump's actually attached to the back of his head. So we do that by just pulling a little bit of the circle on the top there and a little bit at the bottom. And you can run that into the ear. So. Now we can actually continue this line. He can go really lightly behind that ear and curve down into his neck. The other side of his neck is attached at the bottom guideline, which is his circle. So you really lightly draw through his muzzle. So you come out right about here. The other side of the neck. We can show a little bit of the collar. Um, with me as low as I am on the paper, so I'm going to run off. Of course, the whole body is going to be off the paper, so we'll only see a little bit of the top of the collar. It's going to run from the back of the neck. I'm going to curve down, big U shape, and come back up. Trace back over that. That gives us the opportunity to actually finish this attachment to his neck, because his neck's not just floating there, it's attached to his body, so we draw a little curve for the body. And then we can draw kind of a parallel curve to this U shape, just starting from behind the neck. Curve around, running off the paper. It's important that if you do run out of room, that you do just run off the paper. It's always going to look better to run off the paper than it does to try to smash it in there or give them a teeny tiny little collar just to make it fit. Uh, and then we can see the back of the collar should be right in there by the ear. The other side, if you have room, would just be straight down below it. And from behind the ear, you can get the 